yeah, so just recognizing your own power and that you deserve to be in the space and your unique contribution. No one else can do that. And there's somebody out there who needs to hear your voice, who needs to um, receive what you are putting out there. So that. Greetings and welcome to When the Moment Chooses You. I'm your host, Coach Charlene, and I am extremely excited, honored, and all of those wonderful emotions to have on the show today, Dr. Rankin. So welcome to the show, Dr. Rankin. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yes, I'm so excited. Um, I actually started this podcast last July. It was somewhat of a heart project. And, you know, we've been through quite a bit since 2020, actually before that, but especially Mm -hmm. in the nursing profession, the medical profession, uh, when we had COVID-19 and then we had the injustice of George Floyd. I mean, just so many challenges, the double pandemic plus our own uh, personal pandemic. So this when the moment choose issue really transpired out of like a really a dream. I knew that I needed to do something. I had to move from anger to something else. And so I decided that, you know what, I'm going to make a difference. I'm going to do something in this moment that I've never done before. So I never in all of my career had spoken up when I saw injustice, when I saw things that were not going right. Um, But I found my voice. I found my voice in June 2020. And so that's why I decided to start this podcast. It took a couple of years for me to get here, but I finally did it. And I'm so excited that I'm doing it because I do think that there's moments that we're called into to make an impact, to make a difference, to transform, to disrupt or whatever it is that we're called to do. So Dr. Rankins, that's really what this program is about. So what I would like to do is to read your bio first, and then we're going to jump into hearing your story. Sure. Okay. So, um, I want to read this whole thing. It says giving birth in the United States hospitals can be scary, but it doesn't have to be especially with Dr. Nicole Calloway Rankins in your corner. Dr. Nicole is a Duke University trained, board certified, practicing OBGYN and mom of two who empowers first time moms to have the beautiful birth experience experience they deserve. Over her 20 year career, she's helped more than 1000 babies come into the world. And as a proud HBCU grad, Spelman College in North Carolina, at and uh, State University. Her popular podcast, All About Pregnancy and Birth, is a top 50 parenting podcast with over 1.5 million downloads. Wow, she is the bomb. Well, <laughs> my kids don't even use that anymore. They tell me I'm old when I use that. So I got to figure out another word. Yeah, it might be another yeah. word, but thank you so much for, and that is like totally not it because I went on your website and I saw, I mean, it was absolutely impressive. You really are a jewel and I'm so excited that we're going to um, have a chance to listen to your story. So tell us a little bit more about yourself before you start. Uh, yeah. So Um, I can go all the way back. I mean, I'm a native Virginian. I was born and raised in Hampton, Virginia. Uh, I went to college, as you mentioned, at Spelman College, North Carolina A&T State University. I was actually a dual degree major in math and mechanical engineering and had sort of a moment, and this is the honest truth, where I looked in the mirror and saw myself wearing a white coat. And from that and I was in the dorm at standing at the sink, looked up at the sink in the mirror and saw myself in a white coat. From that moment, wow. the seed was planted that I should go to medical school. So um, I'm grateful that I've listened to those nudges and have continued to listen to those nudges throughout my life. I uh, ended up going to medical school back home at EVMS in Virginia and um, thought, I was either going to do surgery or OBGYN. I knew I wanted to do something with my hands and I wanted to work with uh, women and I hated male patients. (laughs) 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 That's just the truth. I just didn't like having a male patient. So (laughs) not that there's anything wrong with males, but I did not like them as patients because they were, I mean, it was always like, you know, people hitting on it, that kind of thing. So I yes. just like, I'm not, doing, you know, so I went to OBGYN, which I um, absolutely love, cannot imagine myself doing anything else. And then uh, 
I actually thought I was going to do academic medicine and started off as a career in academic medicine, but as life twists and turns, I ended up on a completely different path than where I am now. Wow. That's pretty amazing. Okay. So you were an engineer. I was, I was studying to be an engineer. Yes. I have degrees. I have a degree in mechanical engineering. Yes. I never actually got a, you know, practice or worked as an engineer, but yeah, I have a degree in mechanical engineering. That is like really amazing because (laughs) like, that's totally a moment right there. I mean, wow. For you to actually follow what you saw on the inside, I mean, saw the visually outside, Mm -hmm. that's pretty amazing. So Okay, good. I'm going to hear more about that. Yes. But can you tell us just a little bit about like the moment that shows you why, why do the podcast, why OBGYN? Mm-hmm. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So it's, it, it's, 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 um, it's, it's kind of like things have throughout my life, situations have presented themselves and I, I, I listen to those things as they they come and just kind of mm. take one step and one step and one step. So as I said, I initially wanted to be in academic medicine and I was on the faculty at two different universities. And I initially thought I was going to do research. Um, ap- after I did residency at Duke, I did a research fellowship, like a two-year fellowship, and I, and I intended that I was going to do research. I got my master of public health and I did that for seven years and it wasn't working out for me, not because there's anything wrong with research or academics or not even that I was like, like not supported or things like that. It just, it actually wasn't the right place for me. It wasn't where I was supposed to be. So things kind of came to a head when I had a, I had a review with my department chair and he said that it was actually recommended by the, she was the, I I don't want to say her exact position because I don't want people to try to figure out who this person yes. was, but she was someone in, in a higher leadership position who was also a black woman who recommended, this is what my chair told me, recommended, she said that I should be fired uh, because of, because I wasn't doing the research that I was supposed to do. And that really just like threw me all in a tizzy one because I being a highly accomplished used to doing the things that um, I set out to do like for someone to say that I should be fired like really was hard for me and that it was a black woman who said it instead of like reaching out to me talking to me those kinds of things really just it was upsetting so I was in tears in that office I mean it was just all I was I was a mess it was a lot but let me tell you, I walked out of that office and within a few days, I was like, okay, you're not going to fire me because I'm going to quit. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, what's not going to happen is you are going to trap me in this sort of situation. And I had no, I honestly did not know what I was going to do. We were settled uh, in where we were, uh, that our children were in school, we had already moved. And my husband, who was extremely supportive, was like, listen, we, we can't move. So we got to make this work where, where it is. And, you know, just through, um, a, a, a series of coincidences, you know, you never know where, whether, whatever you believe in God, the universe, those kinds of things guides you or sends you the places where you need to go. Uh, so in my, I was, it was time for me around the same time to have my annual checkup, my annual OBGYN checkup. I went to my OBGYN and she was just asking me how I was doing, told her how things were going. And she said, you know, there's a job opening at my hospital for a hospitalist. So as a hospitalist, you only work in the hospital and you just are on labor and delivery. All you do really is deliver babies. It is not what I thought that I would be doing in my <laughs> career at all. Um, but she mentioned it. I knew that I had to find something local. So the rest literally is history. I, yeah. I interviewed for the job, took the job. I it, it was totally different. It was outside academics. I'm in a community hospital environment, very different than what I thought I was going to be, but is exactly where I am supposed to be. And so, um, gratefully that I just took that leap and that worked out well. Sometimes it really is true. You don't necessarily know how things are going to turn out, but the best you can do is just take the next step and the next step and the next step. 
Um, so that's how I got to be a hospitalist. <laughs> and then out of that grew my just seeing how things are and how people practice and different ways that people were practicing that was like very eye opening. That sort of led to um and, and I can you know I can go through the story. I don't want to like bore people forever. Oh, but. you're not you're not <laughs> okay. boring. This is about stories because yes. I, I really want to hear. So yeah, please yeah, do yeah. share. So um I started as a hospitalist, seeing how people practice and do different things, some of it completely not based on evidence. I could see how in one room someone would have an experience based on the doctor they had, and a different room may have a different experience and things that um that were just completely different than what I had been used to. And I also in the background was a, um, was an avid podcast listener. Like I've always listened to podcasts. I love podcasts. And so I was listening to podcasts. I was seeing these different things. I would see that online people, um, there, there weren't a lot of OBGYNs and certainly not with my level of experience. I've been doing this a long time in the space, but that's where people were going to get information. So something said, again, listening to those voices, those nudges said, well, why don't you start a podcast where you talk about pregnancy and birth things? I had no goals for when I started this thing. I just wanted to, <laughs> I just, I just, I just looked up, how do you start a podcast? Um, and it's actually not that hard to start up to do podcasting. The hard part is keeping it going, but right. actually starting is not that hard. So I got my microphone, started recording, and now, you know, here we are, 1.5 million downloads later. Wow, that's and, amazing. Yeah. How long have you been podcasting? Um, so my this is going on year three. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty mm -hmm. amazing. You guys, you got to get over there. Even if you're not ready to have a baby, she has like major wisdom <laughs> kicking off in her podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so let me, so I know things probably have not been easy necessarily. Mm -hmm. First of mm -hmm. all, I wanted to ask you about being a hospitalist. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, in my experience, it's not really that many African-American physicians, mm -hmm. especially an OBGYN. Did you mm -hmm. experience that at all? Oh, 100%. Yeah. There's, I mean, we make up like eh, 5% of yeah. physicians. So not, not a lot, uh, not a lot. Now I have the, the, um, the, you know, I'm very grateful that I trained in an environment. It was, um, unusual where I trained at Duke. We actually had quite a few black physicians and we're still, we actually still keep in contact today. The, those of us, it was a group of us that trained around the, about the same time, seven or eight of us in a series of classes. So it wasn't like I was completely alone, but in general, yes, there are very few black female physicians. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. yeah, and um, I mean, we always hear about race concordant care mm -hmm. and things like that. So mm -hmm. I want to unpack a little bit more about how does a person like you are amazing, <laughs> first of all. But how do you go from this thought of, okay, I want to start a podcast. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. I'm going to shift and do it. Now, I know you said that there was like something divine that happened, whatever mm -hmm. that is for people, mm -hmm. but I think it's totally divine. Um, but what what gives you that? Like you, 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 ha you obviously were able to take risk and not even worry about it. Like you're a risk taker, obviously. Yeah. So I have an intense faith and belief that things will work out for the best. Uh, so even if I can't always see it in the moment and sometimes I, I cannot see it. I mean, I remember standing in my kitchen while I was thinking I was going to, you know, when I had to look for a new job and like coffee was pouring down the coffee maker, like I had forgot to put a cup in. So there was like coffee pouring all over the counter and I was just standing there like, what, what is, what is going on? How am I going to make this work? So sometimes it can be very difficult in the moment to, to know or to see where exactly you're going to end up, but you just try to come back to knowing that I've always been taken care of and I've all, the way has always, things have always worked out. And that is how things will continue to be, even if I, even if I can't see it. So you just have to keep putting one foot in front of the other. And you also have to think of like, what is the, what is the flip side? If you don't take the risk, if you don't, take a chance or a bet on yourself, um, you'll often think through it and realize you'll be stuck in a situation where you're, where you're not happy. So it's like, do I stay stuck unhappy or do I at least try for something different to reach for 
being more fulfilled and feeling like you're really living out your passion and your purpose. Wow, that's pretty awesome. So you actually started your podcast, I mean, right in the midst of COVID and Mm -hmm. beyond, right? Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. what have you witnessed um, as a doctor about this recent season that we've been in the last three years? Yeah. So one thing I didn't realize is how isolating it had been for people having babies to, to be in this COVID times. Like you were, people were going to appointments and you couldn't take your partner with you. They may be able to only come for the ultrasound. You weren't necessarily connecting with in-person childbirth education classes. Um, I also have a online childbirth education class um, as well. So that got to be a lot more popular during the pandemic, but I didn't realize how isolating it was for, for people having babies in this, in, in the times of COVID and then wanting to keep your child safe, your baby safe, just really a lot of isolation for sure. And then, um, It Just in general, it highlighted some of the concerns and issues and problems in our U.S. maternity system that we already, that have been in existence. So it's a system that's really rooted in a patriarchal approach, telling people what to do, not supporting people, asking questions, um, taking away women's power, often even being antagonistic if people like ask questions, like somehow that's a problem, Um, racist, of course, and just... Part part of I also went through my own sort of um, development, like personal de- development, um, and being a better person. Like I started doing things like meditating and um, reading personal development books, and just realizing that I wanted to show up as a different in a different way in my life and through my work. So I realized that I actually was part of that same problem. I had many times rolled my eyes at somebody that had a birth plan because that was, just, <laughs> yeah, so that was, yeah, that was just sort of the, the culture that I was in. Like, oh my God, here we go. Birth plan is an express ticket to the OR. Yeah. That kind of, yeah. So, um, if people, you know, question what you did, not that I was ever mean, I can't say that I was ever mean and people, I had great relationships with, with patients, but those sort of things like really centering the person giving birth is not a part of our culture. So, uh, and it really hit me when I had a patient who I went to see her, she thought she was in labor and I asked her, is it okay if I check her cervix? Even that is something that doesn't, happen routinely in our system that we stop and say, is it okay before I check your cervix? We just kind of go through and do it again, not in a mean way, but we just, we just, that's just, you know, what we do. And when I asked her and she looked at me and she said, well, do I even really have a choice? And that just really hit me like, uh, she Absolutely. Yes. You have a choice about what happens to you in your own body, especially something as invasive as us putting our fingers in your vagina. Like that's pretty invasive. So, (laughs) so, um, that just sort of hit me. Like, I want people to know they have a choice. They have power over what happens in their own bodies. And we as a system must support that. That's so powerful. I'd love to hear more about um, like your podcast in particular. Tell us a little bit more about your podcast. Yeah. So my podcast is called All About Pregnancy and Birth. And even for, it is, it's actually maintained the same format since the beginning. So I have three different types of episodes. I have episodes where I do talk about topics by, just by myself at the microphone, where I do solo episodes and I take a deep dive into a topic. Then I have guests come on, like expert interview guests about all kinds of topics. And I have to say that part of the podcast is a little bit selfish in the sense that I get to, I use it to learn more things for myself that I think that other people will want to know. So of course I have things like pediatricians. Um, I've had people talk about breastfeeding, but I also will have fun or interesting things or that I want to learn more about like acupuncture, uh, like chiropractor care and pregnancy. One of, one of the most popular episodes is actually how to get your dog and your new baby to get along, um, with someone who is like a dog trainer. So (laughs) I have those types of interviews. And then, uh, I do, I have birth stories where I interview women about their birth stories. These are my absolute favorite episodes because one, it helps give me a window into birth that I just, 
didn't see or realize being on the other side right? and just realizing that the importance, so, so much, so, so many times in medicine, we kind of go through and do things. We're so used to doing things, but really having a baby is a core memory for people yes. it's a, and, and they don't know before going into it, a lot of the things that we know, and we have to remember that. So the birth stories are always my favorite because, um, Again, I just get to hear people's thoughts about through their pregnancy and postpartum. And I it definitely think it's helped me to be a better, better um, obstetrician for sure. And I share the good, the bad, and the ugly. I try to share a range of things. I don't want things to be just sad and depressing, but I also right. need to highlight the realities. There's certainly problems in our system, but there are also places where things are being done very well. And this is important to kind of show all of those aspects. And then I'll say the other thing I'll say that my podcast has led me to do. I certainly speak up more about the problems in our system. At first, I was a little bit afraid, to be honest. I was worried I was going to be perceived as like, you know, how dare you talk about these things? And now I'm sort of like, labeled as crunchy or, you know, (laughs) or people, you know, um, people would give me blowback or that, that kind of thing from professionals, but it just kind of gave me the, the strength to, to know that these are important topics that deserve to be talked about. And now I just run my mouth about whatever. So. Well, I am so <laughs> glad you, I'm so glad you do because we really need to talk about it when you can. Mm-hmm. Um, I just think about in my, in my career, I've, you know, gone in and, you know, rounded on certain patients and I look up on the birth plan and I see, I just want to live. Um, I mean, it's sad. It's really yes. pathetic that someone has to say, I mean, they're going, we're, this is like the most beautiful moment that you can encounter, Yes. but they're so worried mm-hmm. that am I going to make it out of this because mm-hmm. of the, you know, the issues that we're having as sure. black moms. So, yeah. um, so I, I'm so thankful that you're raising the disrupting and <laughs> doing what you're doing <laughs> as a trailblazer because we need more of it. Like I would easily be looking and trying to find what you're doing because like as a clinician, I want to make sure that, you know, our team has the best resources. And I, I'm just so excited that I found you, so to speak, and I um, can't wait to refer people to you because the parents need it. I mean, our our families need what you're doing. And I can see why you're like totally blowing up because well, to just the, your voice, your voice is resounding. I found this quote the other day and it says one voice at the right pitch can create an avalanche Mm. and it looks like you are creating an avalanche which is for the better. So thank you so much for that. Now, uh, just really quick, do you have, do you, is there any barriers that you would say whenever you're trying to pursue a dream? Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably the biggest barrier is your own internal things that you tell yourself. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Like, Like people, find it hard to believe, but I 1000% have imposter syndrome where I'm like, well, who am I to, you know, say this? And, um, am I really qualified to do this? And then I've done things like work with coaches a couple of times and things like that. And people would be like, Nicole, you, you've delivered, like, you've been a part of a thousand births. Like you have enough degrees to like line, you know, a wall, like stop it. Like, yes, you have the qualifications, speak up. And it just, it, so definitely feeling like I, I could do something like this and even small things like part of my social media, I used, I, I do, um, quotes. Like I, I would do like inspirational or quotes kind of things or, um, little snippets. And for long periods of time, probably for a year, even longer, all of the quotes were from other people. Like I would look up quotes and then somebody said, why aren't you just saying the things that you know are important? And it was like, well, okay, yeah, okay, I yeah. do have something important to say. So, That's powerful. Yeah. So just recognizing your own power and that you deserve to be in the space and your unique contribution. No one else can do that. Yes. And there's somebody out there who needs to hear your voice, who needs to um, receive what you were putting out there. So that was, I would say that is the, the first initial barrier. Um, the second barrier, and this one is a little bit trickier, but I think it's, I'm finding more and more that um, 
People seem to have an over, I don't want to say an overemphasis on youth, but not enough of an emphasis on experience, especially when it comes to um, something as um, serious as birth. And that doesn't mean I don't want to discount people who don't have as much experience. There are lots of people in this space, but you really want to be able to learn from someone who knows what they are talking about. Yes. Yeah, yes. Having one baby, two baby, three babies. Yes. That brings experience. And, but that doesn't, that's not the same level of experience as, as someone like me, who's delivered over a thousand babies, or even right. there are some people who are physicians, but they aren't even, they aren't practicing anymore. And there's something about knowing that you're connecting with people who are in it and who have experience. I think that that is meaningful and we don't always have that, um, you know, that, that isn't emphasized enough. So that's a, that's, I think is a barrier. I think sometimes to people, getting um, the things that they need. And then I think there's also just the reality is that, yes, there are many people of color, Black people who are quote unquote influencers in the space, but we have a steeper hill to climb in terms of getting in front of more people. We just don't get the same level of exposure. Sometimes people want to pigeonhole us to, to say that we only serve a certain community. And it's, that's fine. If you want to be a Black person and you're mission is you serve black people. That is totally fine. But at the same time, I, I can take care of anybody. Yes. I provide information for anybody and I have the added expertise of being able to serve marginalized communities. So yes. I, I can do it all. Okay. Exactly. So, and so don't, <laughs> you know, don't think that I can only do a certain thing or that I'm only speaking to a certain uh, group of people because I am fully capable as are many people of color and Black people in particular, of speaking to everyone. Yeah. So I think those are those are things that kind of come up. Okay. And I think that's the important part because like <clears throat> as a, a non-Black a physician, to be able to connect with patients and things like that, I could see mm-hmm. people really drawing from your wisdom of how do you approach a patient, you know, exactly. and not, you know, with the stories in your head already and yes. not have the unconscious bias. So I think you're like, you're a gold mine if they recognize it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, because, um, one more one more thing, Dr. Yeah. Rankins. Mm-hmm. There's three things I love to get from my guests. I just call mm-hmm. them three pros of wisdom, sure. three wisdom nuggets. Mm-hmm. So what is Dr. Rankin's top three? Yes. Yeah, so number one is just keep keep trying, like keep going. Just keep taking one step forward, one step forward. If you go back and look at some of my earlier videos, you know, you talk about my website now, just really recent, recently we did it. Yes, it's gorgeous. It's beautiful. I must just say it's like, like it's lovely. But the first website I had was like, <laughs> I, I went on, I think I went on a, a, some random website. I just did this little logo thing yes. and I kind of put it together. None of the pages matched. <laughs> um, um, it was like, it was like a hot mess, but I was out there. So you have yes. to put yourself out there. You will get clarity not from obsessively thinking about things. Clarity comes from actually doing things. So yes. put yourself out there, do things, and you'll get better. You'll reiterate. If you look at some of my earlier videos, it's like, oh my Lord. But you know, <laughs> that we all have, you, you just have to put yourself out there. So that's number one. Do things, put yourself out there, you know, um, keep, keep moving. Okay. Number two, I would say is be yourself. Just be yourself. Be your authentic self whatever that is. It can be tempting to think that you have to be a certain way in order to be received. And you can see people on social media and they're doing different things, but you really have to stay true to yourself. Like the best example that I can give of this is I do not like I dance and I'll go to a party, but I'm not dancing and pointing at things on social media. Like that's just right. not what I'm going to do. That's not me. Okay. So literally when I do things like videos and reels, I just turn on the camera and talk. That's mm-hmm. it. it. That's it. That has worked quite well for me. I get bit. Some of my reels have a hundred, like I have reels on TikTok or videos on TikTok. They have a hundred thousand views. People, wow. people appreciate you just being yourself. So yes. just be yourself. You don't have to do all of the things that everyone else is doing. So that is the, the second thing. Be be yourself. And then the third thing I would say is 
also in, in the context of being yourself, sometimes people think you have to, if you, you can't change or you have to, people expect you to be a certain way. Sometimes you have to change course. You may yes. need to do different things. Maybe you need to show up in a different kind of way. That's okay too. That's also part of being yourself. Don't be afraid to to take risk and change and, and do things. Um, you're still you, you're not the same person that you were 20 years ago. If you that's are, right. then that's a problem. It I is think, a problem. You know, right? so, <laughs> so as you grow, as you develop, it's okay. Sometimes you, you, you change course and that's okay. Wow. Pretty powerful, solid <laughs> nuggets, you guys. So make sure you jot all of those down. Now, I would love for you to tell us how people can get in touch with you. Is there anything that we can do to help support uh, what you're doing? Please share that. With yeah, us. so um, I am everywhere at Dr. Nicole Rankins. My website is drnicolerankins.com. Instagram is my favorite social media platform. I'm there at Dr. Nicole Rankins. But if I had to say one ask, please share my podcast. That is my heart, soul, my baby. It's called All About Pregnancy and Birth. And you can find it on all of the podcast platforms. You can search for pregnancy, birth. You can search for my name. It'll come up. Um, but yes, please share share the podcast. I would so, so appreciate it. Okay. That sounds good. And then you mm -hmm. said that you have um, birth birthing classes. Yes. So I have an online childbirth education class. It's called the birth preparation course. Um, I, that was also a labor of love to record that. It is about 10 hours of content and it really approaches helping people get ready from birth, for birth from the perspective of hospital birth. So that is what I know. That is what I teach. And so I help people to really get prepared for a hospital birth, whether they plan to have an epidural or not, just understanding the system, how to navigate things, understanding what's really happening in your body during labor and birth. We don't, people think you have three contractions and then you run to the hospital and that's not how it works at all. <laughs> TV has just, and movies yeah. have, have make, it's so like, we don't see, you know, real depictions of birth. Back in the day, people, when people used to give birth at home, you would be around, you would see, you know, yes. your mother give birth to your younger sibling or sister or whatever, but we don't see any of that anymore. So this just helps people to understand labor, birth, what's happening in their bodies and um, specifically how to approach a hospital birth. Wow. What a wonderful conversation. I mm -hmm. so appreciate you for coming on when the moment chooses you. You are a total trailblazer. You know, I have a mentor and he said a long time ago, he said, you know, sometimes uh, we're swimming around in the pool when God is calling us to jump into the ocean mm -hmm. and allow the ocean to pour back into the pool. And I totally see why you were shifted in the from engineering to where you are now. And it is such a blessing to humanity to have you serve your gifts to all of us. So I just really value you and appreciate everything that you're doing and uh, support 100% what you're doing. So thank you, thank you, thank you for the bottom of my heart for being on our show. Oh my goodness, thank you so much for having me. I so, so appreciate it.